Okay, what's good with y'all? I'm kind of confused, lost the word. Okay, so Big Pun knocks out Jay-Z with the bottle and fight 80 men in carbon? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. Personally, I, I don't know. But let's get into it. There's allegedly a version of Ether. There's supposedly a line that Nas said that we said, call yourself a gangster, but you were begging for pardon that night in Carbon when Terror Squad flipped on your squadron, try to front on their checks till Pun put a gun to your chest. Pun, man. Is yeah. it, it, I always wanted to know, man. Uh -huh. Is it true that Pun story hitting, hitting Jay with the bottle? Yeah, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think Jay-Z and Pun had beef in the club. Mm -hmm. And I think they hit Jay-Z with a bottle or something. Yeah, Jay-Z was sleeping, whatever, in the back. For instance, we didn't tell you that hoe got hit in the head with a bottle, either. <laughs> Somebody lying to him or he lying to y'all. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I love the Brooklyn League Song Court. Except for Jay-Z. Brooklyn League Song Court. I know we got surrounded by 90 of them the other day. For the past 24 years, people have been spreading the wildest rumors about that night in Carbon. And yeah. what really went down between the Rockefeller camp and the Terror Squad. The most famous rumor suggests that Big Pun hit Jay-Z on the head with a bottle of champagne and knocked him to the ground during a club fight. This video will shed light on that incident and is just one of the many stories that are part of the long-lasting feud which will all be broken down in detail in the upcoming beef analysis. A lot of people confuse that night in Carbon with the meeting in Chicago, where Big Pun and Fat Joe approached Jay-Z on tour. That will be covered in a separate video. This one is only about the first incident, in which the Rockefeller camp and the terror squad clashed at a nightclub. And yes, it got physical on both occasions. The year is 1998. The terror squad is already well known in hip-hop. They grew a huge following and started performing live all around the US in different clubs and shows. At one point the Rockefeller clique was supposed to perform together with the terror squad at an old nightclub called Carbon. 610 West 56th oh, okay. Street, New York, Manhattan. I get it. They redecorated and reopened the venue under the name Terminal 5, cause it was closed by the Drug Enforcement Administration in 2003. Mm. It's a multi-level event site with five distinct room environments and a capacity of 3,000 people. There's a big hall with a stage on the ground floor where artists would perform, and multiple bars serving alcoholic beverages and snacks. On both sides you have the VIP sections on the upper floors, the Rockefeller clique and the terror squad had their own rooms and seats reserved upstairs, but separated from each other. Memphis Bleak was there. The whole, the whole Rockefeller was there, you know. And uh, it was love. It was all in the VIP. It was love. It was gonna wait till Jay Z come out. I thought that was gonna be like a, like a nice little, you know, come together. That night, various artists were supposed to perform, including Big Pun, Fat Joe, Cuban Link, Memphis Bleak, and Jay Z, who was booked by a terror squad associate for fifteen thousand dollars which might not seem like a lot of money to you, knowing how much rappers make these days for a single performance, mm -hmm. and knowing how rich Jay-Z is today. I mean, but back then it was a lot of money for everybody, except Jay-Z of course, who all- Yeah, it depends, because nowadays, people act like they make all this money, but they really don't. They make like a few hundred dollars in big venues. They have to pay a lot of people. That's what happens when you have an entourage. That's what happens when you have a manager. And plus, that's what happens when you have a label. You have to pay people. You have producers, DJs, all this other stuff. People you have to pay. It's in the contract. So, you might think you make $2,000, but you end up making $400. It's because you have to pay the DJ. You have to pay your homeboys because they're going to need some. It's a, it's a business. It's honestly a business set relatively high booking fees. The whole Rockefeller army was there except for Jay-Z, who either left early on without performing or didn't show up at all, cause Jay-Z never intended to perform that night. Yeah. There was some type of misunderstanding during the negotiation process. Jay-Z being there? I don't recall him being there. You know, I don't, but I was always, I mean, I was by the, by the bar anyway, so maybe he was there and he, he exited early. Uh, but I didn't see him in there, but he was supposed to perform. The people who managed the club and the Terror Squad associate thought that he would perform there on stage for 15k. But it turns out that 15k was only his appearance fee. He expected more money to actually go on stage and rap. Felt like him just being there is already worth $15,000. And he wanted the money up front, but he never received it. 
Some people say he was actually in the club in a separate room sleeping, but that was never confirmed by anybody I consider a reliable source. So everybody was waiting for Jay to come out and perform. It would have been a great way for both camps to come together and to strengthen their relationships. But Jay wasn't there. The Rockefeller clique was in the VIP section partying on their own, and everyone else got mad at them for basically ruining the night. Cause they were all waiting. People stopped dancing and started getting bored, wondering when Jay-Z will finally come on stage. For some reason, Jay-Z like end up like welching, not coming out or saying, yo, it's too little for money. The Terror Squad associates who booked Jay then went to the Rockefeller team in the VIP section and spoke to Memphis Bleak, asked him where's bosses and why he ain't performing. And then all of a sudden it turned into a heated argument. Next thing you know, what happened in that room, all I, I, I know later on, it was like Memphis Bleak and his people hit the nigga with, the, with a bottle on his head. The associate got hit with a bottle of champagne by one of Jay-Z's people. He didn't see where it came from or who it was. Some say it was Memphis Bleak who hit him on the head when he was turning around. Others say it was just a regular street dude who surprised him from behind. So the guy from Terror Squad was now on the floor bleeding. And everybody from Jay's camp was laughing at him and enjoying themselves. The guy then stood up and ran to his homies in the other VIP section. The Terror Squad and their associates were chilling and having a good time. Nobody expected what was about to happen. So now the Terror Squad associate comes and he walks back to the VIP where we all at, bleeding. He said, yo, twin, they flipped on me. Once that happened, it was a wrap. Once that happened, it was a wrap. Big Pun pulled out a Rambo knife and him and his whole entourage stood up and attacked the Rockefeller clique. It all resulted in a huge brawl. Cuban Link was throwing bottles and glasses and Pan used his weight to his advantage, tackling multiple people and knocking them to the ground. Some saw him hitting people with champagne bottles. And that's probably where the rumor about Jay came from. You got crew, you got, we, we both in a VIP, so now we, we flipping on, you know, pun, put, we pull out a Rambo knife. I'm on top of the bar flinging bottles, niggas is swinging, you know, RNS niggas is beating up niggas over there. So we just started just wilding because we seen that. We actually seen one of our people bleeding and them saying it was one of them. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, niggas went at it. They can be upon everybody. They went at it with the Rockefeller niggas at the time, you know. At the time, was, you know, niggas got beat up. Niggas got chased out of the fucking VIP and whatever. Jay-Z wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but we definitely didn't lose nothing that day. Just put it like that. Niggas got chased the fuck out of it. Bleak was in there and, um, and the whole like Rockefeller, the young, the street niggas, and uh, artists, other artists, but uh, I don't know, like like Beanie and them, I don't know at that time if we was there or not. But I know we was just got, we got busy. We got busy to the point that they all exited the side door and left, and some of us were still chasing shit. There are some wild stories going around, like for example, Jay-Z buying every drink at the bar so that the terror squad had nothing to drink, and then throwing bottles at him so that he had to leave the club. Or another rumor in which Jay allegedly ran around smacking people with a knot of money for fun, and then Pan getting mad at him and hitting him on the head with a Moet bottle. Noriega, another rap legend, confirmed this rumor when he appeared on Tech Stone's podcast, Tech Season, about seven years ago. Mm. Pun, man. I always wanted to know, man. Uh Is it true that pun story hitting hitting Jay with the bottle? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um... I think they were beefing off of who was closing. I don't remember. But I remember, I think Hov and them had brought like 80 niggas to the spot. And Slime and them was like 8 or 10 or maybe 12 deep. And the shit just took the fan. And from what I heard, because I wasn't there, Pun was football tackling all them niggas. Like, Pun was tackling them niggas. And he was Big hitting dude running up on y'all. Bottle, from what I heard. And Blanking people. Joe and Pause. Jay still hasn't got over that. Rockefeller niggas was hitting niggas in the head with bottles too. Yeah. Them niggas was wildin'. Mm-hmm. Them niggas was out there wildin'. But Nori wasn't there that night. He probably just heard rumors about it or had a conversation with one of the members of the terror squad. Maybe even with Pun himself. Cause Pun and Nori were very close back then. Yeah. Nori was featured on the song You Came Up mm-hmm. off the album Capital Punishment. Yeah. Even Capital appeared Punishment in the music video. Album, by the way. And Pun was on Nori's band from TV off a self-titled album the same year. It's one of the illest posse cuts ever. It had Nature, Pun, Cameron, Jada Kiss, Styles P, and of course Noriega on it. Crazy record. Even had a music video. 
And Pan had a line on there that people to this day use as confirmation for him hitting Jay-Z with a bottle during that club scuffle in Carbon. Champagne on the rocks could be a double entendre, not only to reference Pan's favorite drink, an icy glass of champagne, but also rocks, as in people from Rockefeller, hitting the Rockefeller click with champagne bottles. Mm. At least that's what people right. have been speculating that ever that since that song dropped. Right it's there. worth to that's note okay. that a line similar to this was used on his album Capital Punishment before the incident happened. So it's very unlikely that it was a jab at Rockefeller. And even if it was, it doesn't necessarily hint or indicate that it was Jay who got rocked with a bottle. But that's the rumor that spread all around the world. Even people close to Pan believed that it was true, like Nori for example. Even a decade and a half later, he was still convinced that it went down like that. Jay-Z actually called him after he did that podcast episode to correct him and to ask him to tell the story differently next time. Nori actually hung up on him because he thought somebody was prank calling him and making a Jay-Z impression. He thought the real Jay-Z wouldn't even worry about that. But then when he called the second time, he was convinced and asked Jay how he can fix it. I was like, you can't care about this shit. And he was like, nah, I don't care. I care about you knowing. So I said, how do we fix this? He said, nah, we don't need to fix it. But if the interview ever comes up again, <laughs> I locked the number in, I'm never using it. Jay-Z actually addressed these rumors on Racket in the year 2007 when he appeared in the intro of True Life's mixtape, True York. Now, Jay-Z wasn't the only one who shut those rumors down. Big Pun's widow and his close friend Cuban Link, who was there that night, denied it in multiple interviews. So this story, you know, um, about Pun hitting him in a bottle, I don't know where it came from. I don't know why they keep bringing it up or keeping it uh, alive. Because the truth was, it, it wasn't the truth. You know what I'm saying? If it was true, I'd be gladly say that, yeah, he hit him over the bottle and he knocked out her, but that's not the case. People got it twisted with that. It was two altercations with Jay-Z. Okay. That one, the, the the club in Carbons, Yeah. that was a whole different thing. That was, Jay-Z wasn't even there. So Jay-Z's click got chased out of the club. Okay, so I'm in the video here. I'm just going to say this. Over... The closer performance, all of this, all of the this rumor with this, over a performance, over money, can't be me. That's what I'm saying. Can't be me, man. Like can't be me. This this too complex. I mess with big pun, but I I love Jay Z. Jay Z's the best rapper to me. Like there's no one that could compare. But I don't know personally. Y'all let me know what y'all think. All the OGs in here. Y'all be sure to let me know in the comments below what y'all heard on the street or if y'all was there, y'all let me know in the comments below. That being said, stay tuned to the next video. Peace. Ariel the poet.